Hello and welcome to Splotch Code. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a maths game in Scratch. Let's get started. I have chosen a sprite. You can pick anyone you like to have as your character. In this case, I've just chosen Abby. Now, to start our game, we're going to, as usual, we need an event. So let's go to our events and let's click when the green flag is clicked as be our start of our game. Now, in our game, we want to keep track of the score. So we're going to need a variable called score. So let's go and create that. So we go down to variables on the left here. We say make a variable. We click on that and let's add one called score and hit OK. So now we have a score in the top left there, which is excellent. What we will do to start the game is we will make sure that score is set to zero. So we will grab the one that says set my variable to zero and we'll change that to score. So when the green flag is clicked, set my score to zero is how the game will start. Now we want to say something. We want to say hello to the people that are playing our game. So let's get some words. So that is under looks. So if we click on looks, we will see one called that says hello for two seconds. So let's bring that over and put that there. But instead of just saying hello, let's add a little bit extra. And we can just type in here and we'll say welcome to my maths game okay and then let's put another one in pull that over drop it on and instead of saying hello we'll make that say let's start and now we're ready to start our game so for a maths game we're going to need to get some have some numbers and set some operations, whether we're adding or subtracting or multiplying, dividing, those sorts of things. So let's start by getting our two numbers that we're going to add together. We'll do an addition one here, but I'll show you at the end how you could change it to something else really easily. So let's go to variables and we're going to need to create our variables for our two different numbers we want to add together. So we're going to say variable is number one. Okay. And we need another variable for our number two. Okay, so we've created two variables now called number one and number two. You'll notice that they are showing up on our stage over here on our right. We don't want them to show up. We only want the score. So we can just unclick those boxes and now we've just, we're just back to having the score. Now what we need to do is we need to tell it what to make those two numbers. So we're going to do that by using a variable and let's pull over set my variable to and at the moment it says zero. So let's pull this down. Let's set number one to now we don't want it to be zero. We want it to pick a number and we want it to be a random generated number so that the game makes up the numbers for us and we can keep playing it. So let's go to our operators, which is this little green dot down here. In operators, you'll see there's one that's called pick random 1 to 10. If we pull that over and you just drag it and as soon as you see the little white shape going around my little box, it means I can drop that in there. So what that's telling it is set number one to be a number which the computer picks between one and ten. Okay, so that's our first number. We need a second number to be able to add together. So let's go and get another variable and say set number two. And again, we don't want it to be zero. We want to go and pick a random number again. Hover it over till it goes white. There we go. So now we've set number one to be 
And now any number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 or 10. And number 2 will also be a number between 1 and 10. Right. We also need to set one more variable to get this to work. And that's our total. So we need to tell it what to do with these two numbers. So if we go to variable and let's make a variable. And this one is called total. Okay, again, it's come up on our stage over here. So let's just unclick that. So we're back to only having the score. We don't need the total up there. Right, so the total, we need to tell it what the total is. So again, let's set our variable. So we pull over set my variable, change that this time to total. Set total to, now we need to tell it to add number one and number two together. So that's over in operators. We go over to operators and you'll see there's the different operators we can use. So we can have two numbers added together, Two numbers subtracted from each other, a multiply or a divide. Let's use the addition one to start with. And so let's put that, pull that over and pop that in there. So the total is equal to something plus something. Now those two somethings are our number one and our number two. So if we go back over to variables, we can find number one. And we drag that over and we can pop that into there. And then we grab number two and we pop that onto that one. So our total is now going to be number one plus number two. Right. Now what we need to do is we need to ask a question of the person playing the game. So Abby will ask them to add those two numbers together. So the ask questions section is under sensing. If we go to sensing, you'll see here's a question that says ask something and wait. Let's bring that one over because that's the one we want. Okay. What we now need to do is we need to tell it ask number one plus number two. But we need to create a little command to tell it how to do that, to show that on the screen. So we need to go over to our operators and we have a function here called join. and It says join apple and banana. This is the one we're going to use here. So let's just pop that there. So we need to join number one, a plus sign and a number two. So start with, let's join the number one and the plus sign. So let's go to variables and find our number one. And we can replace apple with number one. Now we'll put the plus sign in. So instead of having banana, we'll just type a plus sign. So that's joined together. So it's going to read whatever our number one is, plus and now what we need to do is we need to put and get another join so that we can add the number two in as well. So let's go back to our operators, go to join and pop that there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the first join we made and put that in as the first part. So that's going to go in. So we're now saying join our join of number one and a plus sign with a banana which we're going to replace the banana with number two. So by having two joins together, what that's done is it allowed us to join three things together in total. So we've got number one plus number two. And what we're going to do is we're going to now take all of that up and pop that up there. And that's what Abby is going to ask the person playing our game. Now, they're going to give us an answer and we have to work out what we're going to do with their answer when they've given the answer, if they've got it right or got it wrong. So to do that, we need to put in a control and we want an if then else statement. If they get it right, give this message. If they get it wrong, give this message. So if 
than else. And we'll pop that there. So the if part is if their answer is equal to the total, and the total is something we set up here, which is calculated number one plus number two. So if, and you'll see we've got a little hexagon here, we need to find something to a hexagon to put in there. And we need that to be the answer is equal to the total. And since we got something that is a is equal, that means we need an operator. So if we go over to operators here and we'll find one that says something equals something. And that's the one we want to pop in there. So we hover over till it goes white. There we go. If something equals something, then it's going to do something. So we need this first bit here to be if the answer. Now answer is over under sensing. And this will be based on whatever the person has typed in. So if we pop that, hover it over, pop it there. If the answer is equal to the total, which is what number one plus number two equals. So we need to go to our variables where we created one called total and pop that in there. So if the answer is equal to the total, that means they've got it right, then we need to say well done to them. So now we're going to have Abby say something. So saying things is under looks. Let's go back to looks and grab the one that says say for two seconds. But this time instead of saying hello, if we click in there, we want to say correct for two seconds. So if they get it, the answer right, it'll say correct. And then if they've got it right, we want their score to go up by one. So that under variables, we'll go and find change my variable by one. We'll bring that one over, pop it there and say change my score by one. So if the answer is correct, it will say correct and my score will go up by one. But if they don't get it right, we need to tell it in this section here, in the else section, we need to tell it what to do. So again, we're going to have Abby say something to them. So we'll go over to looks. Let's bring across a say. This time we want to say that they're wrong and give them what the correct answer was. And so we, to do that, we're going to have to put a jo use a join again. So we can join our words and the answer that it needs to have. So that remember that the joins are over in operators. We click over there. Let's go and grab our join. Join an apple and a banana. And we're going to join to start with at just our words. So instead of apple, we're going to say sorry incorrect. The answer is and then instead of banana we need to put the right answer into that box and the right answer is our variable called total. So let's go and find that over in variables and say total. Okay so now it will say sorry incorrect the answer is four. That's the right answer. So what we'll do is we'll now take that join, drag it up and pop it in there instead of the hello. So we say incorrect, they give them the right answer for two seconds. So now we've covered if they've got it right, when it gives them their correct and puts their score up by one, or if they got it wrong or it tells them the right answer. But of course, because they got it wrong, their score doesn't have to go up now. So that's what we need to do the actual maths bit. But doing it just once would be a bit boring. So we want to get it to do it, say, maybe 10 times. So you've got 10 questions and we can see what your score is for the total 10 questions. So, of course, to do that, we need a repeat function in here to loop around 10 times. So that is under controls. So we go to controls and let's choose the repeat 10 times and let's drag that over and we need want that to sit in between 
here. So it start the repeat starts when it choose, is choosing the numbers. So we do our welcome bit here. Then the repeat is the bit where we're choosing numbers, working out the answer, asking them the question and telling them whether they got right or right or wrong. Then we go back up, choose some more answers, some more numbers, work out the, what the, the total is, ask them and tell them whether they're right and keep looping around 10 times. Or you can have a different number if you like, but I've set it for 10 there. So now we probably just want to add something at the end that tells them what their total score was at the end. So let's do that now. So again, we're going to say something. We're going to have Abby say something. So under looks, let's choose. But this time, instead of saying it for two seconds, which means that the words just stay up on screen for two seconds, we can leave them on the screen until they want to start their next game. So instead of choosing the hello for two seconds, which is the one we've used a few times before, let's choose the one that just says hello. And that will put it down here. But instead of saying hello, we're going to want to say well done and your score is and then the score that they got. But to do that, to add together our words and the actual score, we're going to need a join again like we've used a few times before today. So again, we'll go to operators and we're going to choose the join. I'll just pop it here for now. So in the first join, this can be our words and we will say, well done. Your score is, and then in the banana spot, we're going to put the total, what, what, their actual score was. So we go to variables and we find the one called score and we'll put that in there. Excellent. So it'll say, well done, your score is nine, if they got nine out of 10. So let's just drag that over, pop that instead of the hello. There we go. That is our game done. We have got our maths game completed. So shall we have a look at how it works? Okay, so remember to start the game, we're going to hit the green flag. So, hello, welcome to my maths game. Let's start, says Abby. And here's the numbers, first sort of numbers pop up. One plus two. So the person playing the game enters it in. Correct. Nine plus three. Answer, correct. Six plus eight, two equals eight. Correct. 6 plus 10 equals 16. Okay, let's get one wrong by, by on purpose this time. So let's just put in the answer as 1 and see what happens. Sorry, incorrect. The answer is 12. Keep going for the rest of the game. Nine plus ten is nineteen. Correct. Three plus eight, twelve. Oops, got that wrong. So it told me what the actual answer was, and got that one right. And then it says, "Well done. Your score is eight. And it stays on the screen until I start the game again. Now. That's our game made. You can easily do the same game, but instead of having it adding the two numbers together, so where we said here that the total was number one plus number two, you could instead go over to the operators and instead of having the plus, you could have a subtraction or a multiplication or a division. So you can just change it and have different games to test your math skills in different areas. You could even look at adding timers and things like that if you wanted to, to make it a more advanced game. So I hope you've had fun making that game. Hopefully you can go across to Scratch and give one a go yourself. Try changing up a few different things. So thanks for watching Splotch Code.